uh, copblock.org. Tell us about your website, your activism, and uh, about uh, your partner that you're that is in jail right now. We'll do definitely. Uh, I'm glad to uh, copblock.org. It's a it's a decentralized organization. It's a, a bunch of individuals united by the shared goal of the, uh, police accountability. Uh, the site was came online about two and a half years ago when my friend Daniel Freeman, who you, who you referenced, he's now in jail. Uh, currently, we'll get to that, but. Uh, he, he had, you know, been sort of harassed by local police in his area for some time and wasn't getting any uh, accountability through the, uh, the mechanisms that they provide. So he started putting some stories online, and I joined him there shortly after. He and I had previously collaborated on a pre- couple other projects, and uh, we just sort of grew this, tried to grow the site, get the, get the uh, idea out there that badges don't grant extra rights. Connect right. With people who that, that resonates with. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with you. The badges don't grant oh, right extra on. rights. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we just, uh, I mean, essentially now the site's grown. You know, we get uh, uh, submissions and, and uh, blog submissions, video submissions. There's about uh, maybe 30 or a few dozen offshoots in local in uh, cities and towns now across the states and in the uh, U.K. So we're just essentially encourage people to stand up for the rights and stand on the conscience, support each other. We do call floods. We encourage people not to take plea deals when they've done nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Point out victimless offenses, and uh, really, you know, we're just trying to live in a, in a more peaceful, prosperous society. And right now, we see that uh, the folks that get away with a lot of uh, violence uh, tend to have badges on. So you just try to point right. that out and uh, encourage people to do what they know is right. Right. Yeah. I mean, is this? Uh, that sounds. Those are all things we all agree with. Um, <laughs> is this related to Cop Watch at all? Um, I was involved in a Cop Watch where we went on like neighborhood patrols and stuff out in Western Massachusetts for a while. Um, is that so, is that kind of stuff that you guys do? Is, do you go out on patrols or do you um, just encourage people that this is like a central forum for them to post interactions with police and get advice about it? Or yeah, a little of both? Uh, <laughs> it, that's a good question. We definitely have collaborated with folks from Cop Watch, and uh, currently I'm uh, collaborating with a guy named Jacob Crawford, who's been involved with Berkeley Cop Watch for about a decade on some video stuff. But uh, I would say the difference between Cop Block and Cop Watch, I mean, they're both very decentralized. So we're not, um, I mean, individuals that are that ascribe and are loosely affiliated with Cop Watch, they're, they're welcome to go out and do patrols if they, if they so desire. We don't necessarily you know mandate anything that you have to go out and do this or or whatever right. just whatever the folks folks on the ground with the task of knowledge whatever they think is best whatever's needed for their situation if there's a lot of heavy-handed stuff going on in a certain area of town then you know we've definitely gone out on a lot of patrols ourselves um using the uh numerous you know multiple vehicles people on the ground with with scanners and mm-hmm. uh you know, CB radios to communicate and uh everyone you know video cameras and live stream capabilities and uh, just try to work together on that front. But I would, I guess I would just differentiate a little bit Cop Watch and Cop Block. I think Cop Block, we try to be um, a little more, I don't know, I, I guess I'd say um, strike the root and we'd, uh, instead of like vilify, for example, say like the Atlanta Police Department, we might say, hey, Joe Smith, who works for APD, right. uh, shot this guy. And then we'd, we'd try to dig up that person's contact information, maybe even their home address. And you know, because individuals at the end of the day are responsible for their actions, and you know, if you try to you try to go to court and get some uh, accountability, everybody's being paid by the same pot, which is stolen money, stolen taxpayer money, and they, their incentive is only to uh, safeguard their own, their own actions. So, um, and also for me personally, involved with cop block, it's it's just to point out that the, the institution itself is the issue uh, because currently policing is provided by a monopoly. Mm-hmm. And it, People claim a, claim a legitimate right to the use of force. So, yes, it's good to point out when bad incidents happen and hold those individuals accountable, but they're going to continue to happen unless and until we uh, people withdraw their consent from supporting this institution of violence. That's such a good point, too, about the uh, policing being a monopoly. I think that's one of the big issues. And, it, and it's such a... To have that monopoly on the right to use force that's and the right to ruin people's lives and yeah. <laughs> you know control right. all shouldn't there be some competition on that like right. like like if uh, last night at the any nightclub you know you have your security staff and if they treat you in a certain way you can always go to another club you know what i mean like there's exactly. competition there's freedom competition. of choice <laughs> yeah. i don't 
What do the cops have to say about uh, cop block? Has any have have they responded in any way, or how does the public f- view the website and what you guys do? Uh, I mean, it very wi- it varies widely. Last night, I'm down here in uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina, right now. And last night, we went downtown. We had cameras and rocked our cop blocks shirts and stuff, and mm-hmm. interacted with a number of cops. And they were, for the most part, most of them were real friendly. They took our business cards and they. <laughs> they uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll make the statement, badge don't grant your rights, and, you know, we film for accountability for your safety, everyone's safety involved in an objective record. And, you know, it's good to see when, when uh, folks currently employed in that profession will, are willing to have a conversation and engage because, to me, it's just, we're, I'm just trying to share an idea that we each own ourselves and we should be free to act as long as we're not initiating force. And, you know, I know, like, I actually went to school for law enforcement, so if someone were to come up to me and, and try to engage me and, and you know, and be non-hostile, then I may, might be more receptive and say, you know what, you're right, I prefer to work in an environment where I don't have these heavy-handed colleagues or corrupt colleagues, and I know, and I don't have to enforce victimless uh, action, you know, legislation that targets victimless action and things like that. So, you know, at some point, there, I mean, there, there have been individuals who, who've left the police departments based on their consciences, and I hope as that happens, you know, people that are not yet, that aren't cops, you know, they, they sort of withdraw their consent and they don't just uh, grant them uh, the ability to do things that they are, that are wrong for their neighbors to do then, you know, there really is no difference. So right. When someone puts on that costume or that badge, they, they don't have extra rights. And so, yeah, it, it, uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, with, with the way the things are these days with police accountability on the forefront, a lot of people's minds, more people being ne- negatively impacted. Um, you know, by the folks who purport to protect and serve, uh, then it has, uh, I think, created a, a more of a cautious awareness of the need to film interactions and things like that. And I, you know, I'm really optimistic about the way the way things are going. Yeah, uh, tell us about uh, Ad- uh, I'm, I keep saying his name wrong. Can you say it again? A Adat- yeah. demo. A yeah. demo. Yeah, the demo. Yeah, the demo. He. Uh, He's currently, right now, he's in Manchester, New Hampshire, and he's been sitting in jail at uh, Valley Street Jail. And um, uh, essentially, he, uh, in early 2010, four off duty managed cops beat up a guy. And right away, the city solicitor said, I'm not going to charge them. And uh, a year over a year later, uh, the attorney general said, It wasn't Manchester PD's best day, but I'm not going to charge him either. So about a week after that, a few dozen of us went outside the police department, held a police accountability rally, handed out stuff and uh, held signs. And some people were using children's chalk, chalk on the sidewalk in the building. They ended up taking, like, cameras and phones from nine or ten of us and arresting eight of us. And uh, Adelo got arrested. He went limp and uh, didn't, you know, he doesn't want to assist in his caging and again he was just trying to make apparent make a transparent uh these misdeeds that these four employees there had done and not been held accountable for and uh so he went limp they charged him with resisting he was found guilty for that and sentenced the max which was 12 months what with 10 months of, yeah with 10 months suspended it's really ridiculous civil disobedience is tw- as a year in jail what <laughs> yeah so it's ridiculous they put martin luther king in jail for a year I don't know. I, I don't think so. Yeah, sure don't I, that's just yeah. just out of it. What? What the? F- that's crazy. Yeah. And so yeah. He, 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 something else is going on too. Is doesn't he like? Yeah. He. So from that, anyway, we spent some time in Manchester doing outreach last fall. We handed out five thousand DVDs, talked to a lot of people on the street, got their stories and stuff like that, and we interacted with a couple of high school students. And uh, but, uh, shortly after we interacted with them, about a week later. Uh, one of them observed the school liaison officer, another Manchester PD employee named Darren Murphy, uh, observed him uh, a- approach his friend, and his, his friend had uh, his, taken his sister's purse, who was also a student there, just playing a joke and planning to give it back. The, the Darren Murphy walked up, said, you know, give the purse back, and he said, I will. And, you know, uh, Darren Murphy took the purse and uh, told the student he was under arrest, and the student swore her, and then Darren Murphy proceeded to grab the student by the, the hair essentially and spin him around, jerk him off the seat, spin him around and slam his head off the table. And so they came to us that wow. evening after the incident happened with the video footage that had been captured um, on a cell phone and uh, we put that live on cop block. He got picked up by some uh, you know, New Hampshire media and Boston media and some other media and uh, the next day Damo followed up on that. He called Manchester PD and asked, you know, essentially to try to um, 
told Darren Murphy to come. We'll try to ask questions. And, and uh, he, he had a very brief conversation with a Manch PD uh, officer who picked up the phone. And he said, hey, I just wonder if you had any comment about this video. And, and the uh, person said, uh, you know, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I'll check it out. And essentially that was it. He, he didn't express any concern or anything. So then we called the West High School where the incident happened. Talk briefly to a secretary who passed the conversation on to the principal, um, Mary Ellen McGorry, who herself used to work in the assistant, who used to be an assistant uh, attorney with the county there as well. So it's a pretty incestuous relationship. But she right away went on the defensive and said, Well, I can't do anything. Uh, Manch PD is investigating. And, but she did acknowledge that Darren Murphy was back on the job the next day. So they almost took portions of these conversations, including on a video update. And a couple months later, found out in front of a front page article from the biggest paper here in, in, in New Hampshire, the Union Leader, that he had been indicted on three counts of felony wiretapping, each of which has a seven-year max. So he's currently, he has trials slated for August 13th. Uh, he's facing 21 years for merely calling and trying to follow up, you know, as a journalist would, and try to solicit con- uh, comment on this incident. Wow. That is That's just, unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> That's just First unbelievable. Event, like, what about being a journalist? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, this... We... we uh, what... Have you guys contact, like, heard from any, like, ACLU yeah, or any of that? Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, like, I mean, you... you I know that you... Well, we, go ahead. Yeah, we've... Uh, we, it, I mean, we've in the past had uh, some other run-ins, you know, in other situations, and we've had conversations with people from the ACLU, but... Nothing's ever really panned out, and we've um, we have gone pro se and represent ourselves. And sometimes there are some folks with more legalese knowledge that weigh in and, and uh, help us out and things. But uh, he is, i don't believe on this instance he's uh, contact the ACLU. Well, he's, I'm going to contact him. I, I talked to yeah, them. We, yeah. For, okay. Cool. So, so cool. we got to get that because this is this is like way beyond. This is a lot of time he's looking at and. Uh-huh. They're not messing around. They're trying to screw them. I'm going to say that. I, there's not proof of it, but what? Tell us about the uh, the the the, the misfire. They they sent the the hearing date Better? to the wrong address, yeah. and I mean this this is a sign that this system is actually trying to put this guy away for a long time because of his activism. But what? Tell us right. what happened with that. Right. Yeah, and I'll just briefly say too. All, I mean, I know I cover a lot of ground real quick. So yep. if anybody's interested to learn more, there's two web, two uh, blog posts I'll reference quick. They're both on Coplock, so Coplock.org/pledge, and that has the information about the uh, the chalking arrest and and his sentencing for that going limp. And then the second one is Coplock.org/decades for accountability, and that's that's about his the felony wiretapping charges, but. Um, the, the letter you referenced, it, it happened last year, so after he was found guilty of uh, resisting, he noted that he was going to appeal, and he was told that he'd be sent a letter uh, indicating that when to show up for jury trial, essentially, uh, for that appeal, so he could explain what happened in front of the jury of his peers. But uh, that letter never showed up. But he did get a letter uh, soon after that said, hey, you missed your court date, therefore you're automatic, like, you missed your chance to appeal, and you have to show up for sentencing. And, um, but the curious thing was, uh, he had received correspondence from the court to that same address previously, but uh, numerous times, and the the letter indicating that he missed his court date went to the correct address. But the letter, the notification of when he was supposed to show up, went to an address that doesn't even exist uh, in the city where it was sent. But the letter inside, that we found out later, had the correct address on it. So either it was a bureaucratic error or purposeful, purposefully done, so he could not you know, essentially win in the court of public opinion, which, you know, is what we try to do and what we, you know, why we think we have to do this, you know, before things get worse and more difficult, you know, down the line. So, it was either a bureaucratic error or it was uh, perfectly that, yeah. done. I'm going to say, it. That, that wasn't a bureaucratic <laughs> error. That was an intentional, that, I'm calling right. it, I don't care if I get sued or not, that was an intentional, this is, this is, uh, I had the word, like, it's a, it's a dirty trick. That's all it is. They they pull a dirty trick to throw this man in jail. You know. And, and how much longer is he going to be there? I mean, when's the earliest he can get out? Well, he's so he gets sentenced to twelve months, but he kind of at his state, so he has two months he's supposed to sit. And so he went in. Uh, he got taken in July first. So he's, he should be out August twentieth. Wow. During that time, he has um, he has his, his 
trial for his felony wiretapping charges, which is supposed to happen on August 13th. But he yesterday had a trial management meeting, and they offered him a couple of plea deals, both of which he turned down. So he's supposed, oh. to, supposed to revisit him on Monday. So we'll and what's the day. maximum? Uh, what's the maximum time that he could be put away for the wiretapping? Well, well there's three counts, and they each uh, have a max of seven years. So he could. Jesus uh, Christ! Eventually, he's facing 21 years. That's unbelievable. It so is. he's asking people right now in Cop Block. You have, you have a video that you've referenced to to give money to pledge for the time that he's in jail. This supports right. Cop Block and all the activism and the work you guys are doing. Tell us more about right. that. How can people donate? How does that work? So yeah, that's that's uh, in reference to the current time he's sitting right now. slash pledge He's saying, hey, if you think it's ridiculous that I'm in a cage for two months for trying to put a spotlight on the action, the double standards these Manchester PD employees got. Again, these four off-duty cops who severely beat up a guy and were never held accountable. Um, and then uh, you can vote with your wallet and send a signal and both help me and Cop Lock and help us continue to do our work and also send a signal to the, the real aggressors, that are, the real the captors that have put him there. And uh, so he says, you know, hey, if you want to donate five cents a day, then that equates to a few bucks for these two months. If you want to give a buck a day, then it's 60 bucks total. But there's a there's a we pay widget on there that uh, folks, if they're so inclined, can you know donate a, you know five cents a buck a day, 20, 20 cents a day, whatever they whatever they want to do, or they can give a one time donation. And essentially, Daniel said, if I raise five hundred dollars or less, I'll I'll uh, use half for my commissary, and when I get out, to continue to advance stuff, and the other half will go to cop block. And he said, if I raise over five hundred dollars, which he has already, he's raised I think. Uh, over thirteen hundred dollars. Great. Um, then, then I'll take a quarter of it from my commissary and to use when I get out, and the rest will go to cop block just to uh, continue to advance this mission and, and uh, right on. hopefully awesome. mitigate these things from happening in the future. I hope people support that. You know, throw money down if you if you like what you hear and you you don't like what's going on. Throw the money down. Copblock.org. Exactly. Support good people. Thank Take you, that money away you, from Pete, your next for, cup yeah. of coffee and send it to someone who really, need, who really needs it, you know? Uh, yeah, and thanks, appreciate Pete, for calling in today. Uh, you know, I appreciate yep. uh, you, you got it all in. We had a limited time. We're running a little behind today, and you, you, you really uh, represented well today. We want to uh, keep in touch with you. We want to make sure that when, when things like this happen or anything's going on with Cop Block, any of the uh, new submissions, if someone puts in a great new video or news, we want to hear from you and, and get the updates on our show. Well, I appreciate it. Right. I'll have a new, I'm actually in the process of cutting up a video right now about a demo situation. The update that we just went over, it'll be maybe a, a five or six minute long video, and it should be up by Monday. So if people are interested to check that out, it'll be on copblock.org. We will definitely check that out, and uh, we'll post it on all our groups, too. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thanks for calling in. All right. Yep, take care. That was Pete Pete Air from uh, from copblock.org, copblock.org. Um, definitely support those guys. They're doing great work and uh, seem to be being unfairly targeted, as we hear over and over again. And they're very popular, too, on, on YouTube and Facebook and all mm -hmm. that. I mean, they have a, a, a big time. People are checking them out because they're actually doing the work. You can see it busting out when you watch these videos. and. And uh, well, even like uh, some of the states, like New Hampshire has a huge liberty pro uh, liberty group going on with uh, the Free Staters and mm -hmm. Free Keen, and we've had the Ridley Report. <coughs> There's uh, they have Pork Fest. They have, all, they have a lot of things going on up there, and, and Cop Block has been up there, and uh, that's where Adamo is uh, having some issues. Yeah, but we we wish him the best, obviously, and especially knowing he didn't take those plea deals. Uh, he's going to need all the all the good thoughts and, and support that he can possibly get. So, uh, you know, definitely, if you can give a few dollars, give it to the cause. If you can't, at least keep them in your thoughts, pass the word along, spread it around, tell yeah. people about this. It's, you know, definitely. An, an injustice. Uh, but, yeah. Do what you can. And even if that is just posting it on your Facebook or promoting, you know, whatever <laughs> it is you, you liked on today's show, definitely like it, promote it. Yeah, we'll post uh, some links to some of the, uh, the videos on the Cop Block website, but you can check them out yourself. Yeah.